Today, let us take some time to study God's Word together with the sermon titled, The Focus of Life and Gratitude. Without giving much thought, we often find ourselves involved in situations that at times make us angry, other times upset, and occasionally lead us to harbor negative thoughts. Regarding this matter, today, among the many teachings of God, I want to share with you the message, let us live our lives focused on gratitude. Upon waking up in the morning, try to live your daily lives by setting your focus primarily on gratitude. Then, even when members speak with voices that might be a bit hard to listen to, their words can still be graciously received if we set our focus on gratitude. On the other hand, if we do not live our lives focused on gratitude, unexpected situations can make us feel angry and upset. However, as time passes, we come to think, why did I behave that way? I could have acted differently. Don't you find yourself thinking this way quite often? Therefore, if we always live our lives focused on gratitude, evangelists will always experience overflowing thanks and joy towards God while preaching. Workers will find themselves brimming with gratitude even at their workplaces. And students will certainly encounter numerous reasons for gratitude in their schools. Without father and mother, would we have anything to be thankful for while living on this earth? Earth in the universe is just one of those very insignificant stars that, even if it didn't exist, would make no difference. However, Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother came to this world to atone for our sins. God did not hesitate to sacrifice and even die according to all the prophecies of the Bible. Some may ask, what is it that God has given us that we should be thankful for? His coming to this earth itself is a reason for gratitude. Even if He had not come, would his work in the kingdom of heaven have stopped? No, it would not have. Nevertheless, not considering us insignificant, but regarding us as precious, he left behind his glorious throne in heaven and came to this earth. This in itself is a truly amazing deed for which we are extremely grateful. Moreover, he was subjected to harsh ridicule and persecution by his creation for taking our sins upon himself. He did not hesitate to face such uncomfortable conditions and environments, but silently walked that path on our behalf. Just like a lamb silent before its shearers. Please continually reflect on the lives of father and mother. Of course, there are many things to be grateful for to those around us, yet, we should never forget to offer our gratitude to father and mother. That is why I truly respect David whenever I read the Bible. Even in the tiniest matter, David said, give thanks to God the Creator, praise Him. Among all the deeds of David, one thing we can find the most is gratitude. I am really envious. It is because David's life was not always one that could be easily filled with gratitude. Since he was betrayed, he was driven out, and his life was in danger. Despite going through such suffering, rather than enjoying peace and rest as a king, David always gave thanks to God. I give thanks to God who made the heavens, the earth, and everything in them. I give thanks to God for delivering Israel from the Egyptian army. 
I give thanks to God for allowing Israel to enter the land of Canaan. David always lived his life giving thanks to God for everything, which is why God always said, David is a man after my own heart. This means that God was truly pleased with him. Who in this world can live a life that truly pleases God's heart like he did? David always gave thanks to God in every moment of his life. I am thankful for this and that. Even in moments when his life was in danger, due to his son Absalom's betrayal, he still gave thanks to God saying, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Of course, it was because God opened his eyes of faith to be thankful. But still, throughout the Bible, it is hard to find an example of anyone who offered as much thanks as David. Everyone, you can still receive the gratitude award in heaven if you start preparing for it from now on. Therefore, let us be those who always give thanks within God. When we give thanks a lot, everything looks right. What do the eyes of faith allow us to see? Don't they allow us to see the path? However, what about the eyes of grumbling, doubt, or hesitation? All they can see are obstacles. But through the eyes of faith, those are no longer seen as obstacles, but as the path. The perspective completely changes. Every year as the heavenly family members return to Jerusalem Mother, each one of them goes through all kinds of unspeakable difficulties and situations. But the fact that they safely arrived in Zion and are embraced by father and mother fills me with immense gratitude. I hope that all our Zion family members will receive much blessing so that we can hold father and mother's hands and enter the eternal kingdom of heaven together. A mother and her young daughter went to a fruit store and bought the fruit. The owner of the fruit store, finding the child adorable, gave her an apple as a gift. Seeing this, the mother asked her daughter, what did I teach you to say when you received something like this? After thinking for a moment, the child said, Ma'am, please peel this for me. Everyone, this is a real story. What should we do in this situation? The mother wanted her daughter to say thank you. So she said, What did I teach you to say? But the daughter didn't grasp her teachings. She asked to have it peeled instead. We are living in a time when gratitude has disappeared. In heaven, there are baskets that hold our prayers when we offer them to God. Please note that this is not a story from the Bible, but a fable. And do not ask, is there really such a basket in heaven? One is a basket of gratitude, and the other is a basket of wishes. Things like, please do this for me. Angels would carry the baskets to God once they were full. The basket of wishes is always filled to the brim and is frequently carried up to God. But the basket of gratitude does not get filled even after a year has passed. It must be completely filled before it can be brought to the throne. Everyone, should this be how we live our lives? Father, please do this for me. Mother, please do that for me. We should make these kinds of requests in our prayers. However, along with it, we should also frequently offer prayers of gratitude. That is why Jesus gave us this teaching 2,000 years ago. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 17, verse 11.
chapter 17, verse 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He showed gratitude to Jesus. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Everyone, in the past, leprosy was considered an almost incurable disease, wasn't it? This incurable disease was healed through the gift of the power of Jesus Christ. How grateful should they be? This is what we are like. God has granted all our wishes, yet we fail to give thanks. We don't know how to give thanks, making absurd requests like the child who, upon receiving a fruit, says, please peel it for me. Even though that moment, undoubtedly, is one to be thankful for. That is why Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? I bestowed such grace upon ten people. Yet only one returned to give thanks. Where are the other nine? Whenever I read this word, I come to reflect on ourselves. God enables us to receive answers in abundance when we offer many prayers of request to God. When we receive something, just like the child received an apple, what is the best thing for us to say? We should say thank you. We should not make unreasonable demands like that child asking for it to be peeled and thus adding more burden. Instead, we should say, Thank you, Father and Mother. I made a small request, but you have granted me something so great. Thank you. I will never forget your grace. We should deeply engrave it on our hearts, yet we take it for granted and fail to express gratitude. Instead of taking it for granted, thinking, Today went well. A month passed without any problems, and a year passed without any accidents. Please remember that God follows you all year round. When you head towards danger, He holds you back. And when something is about to go wrong, He prevents bad situations. Do not think of God's diligent efforts as something to be expected. Just because you were okay yesterday and you are okay today. If so, why do others suffer from so many accidents and live amidst great hardship and distress? We all live in the same environment, yet we are okay, but why aren't they? God blocks all dangers and hardships to ensure our safety, always upholding us with His invisible hand so that we can safely journey towards the kingdom of heaven. We should be able to see His protection, a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. We should see the efforts of father and mother who labor even in the finest details for us. Then, like David, we can say, God is good and righteous. Everything God does is true. I give thanks for this and I give thanks for that. Now, let us widely open our spiritual eyes. 
We must all learn to give thanks while witnessing father and mother toil for each and every one of us. Let's turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 12. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, to warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually. And what should we do? Give thanks in all circumstances. In all circumstances means to give thanks no matter what. Doesn't this mean that we should give thanks whether we are in hardship or our wishes are answered? Simply put, give thanks in every circumstance, no matter what situation you are in. For this is, whose will is it? God's will for you in Christ Jesus. When God gives us sufferings, it is to provide training that strengthens our mental muscles. After such training, our mental muscles become very strong and solid. Everyone, many of you may not be fond of rainy weather. When it rains, it becomes inconvenient to engage in various activities and also affects our mood. Some people wish for the weather to be sunny all year round. However, such a person would have to live in the desert. If it doesn't rain at all, and the sun is always up, what happens to the ground? Since there is no moisture, trees cannot grow there. The land inevitably turns into a place where all living things would perish. Thus, what does God do about the weather? Doesn't God continually change the weather? Today will be sunny, tomorrow cloudy, and the day after tomorrow snowy, He sometimes makes it rain. God desires for His children to finish their lives in the city of refuge with the right enlightenment and return to our heavenly home holding Mother's hand. That is why God tells us to rejoice always, no matter the circumstances. According to a survey conducted by a transportation authority, it was found that the sections of the road with the highest number of accidents are not the winding highways but the straight ones. And the longer a straight stretch is, the higher the accident rate is. The result is contrary to our expectations. Sometimes the path should bend and at times involve elevations. It is with such features that we can safely complete the journey to the end. Everyone, how much does God love us? He loves and cherishes us so much that He came to this earth and was crucified on the cross for us. When God of such love gives us a small hardship or an obstacle, that is not truly an obstacle at all. Considering it the moment to strengthen our mental muscles, we should always offer abundant thanks to God just as David did. In all circumstances, we should say, thank you for this, thank you for that. Making a resolution, the ultimate focus of my life is gratitude. No matter who you meet, whether you are preaching, studying the Bible, or spending time with your neighbors, 
If you always focus on gratitude in all these situations, God will surely be with you at all times. Let's turn to 2 Samuel chapter 22. With the goal of becoming people whose lives are focused on gratitude, let us make this year one where we offer abundant thanks and glory to Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. Let's take a look at 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 47. Chapter 22, verse 47. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be my God, the rock, my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who puts the nations under me, who sets me free from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes. From a violent man you rescued me. Therefore, I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing the praises of your name. He gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. David seemed to be conscious of God, having good spiritual perception. He realized, this situation and that situation as well are for my own good. God always works hard in various ways for his chosen people. I live in a palace of cedar while God remains in a tent. This has always bothered me. This was why David decided to build a temple for God. Then God said, Since you are a warrior and have shed much blood, let your desire be fulfilled in your son's generation. Ultimately, wasn't it David's son Solomon who built the holy temple, the house of God, for God? David was very attentive. He thought, what things can I find to be thankful for in all aspects? Even just waking up and being able to breathe today, what should we do? We should be thankful. There are people who pass away at night in their sleep. Moreover, hasn't God allowed us to wake up and participate in a part of the gospel ministry? If you think about everything carefully, we can conclude them with gratitude just as David did. Let's see 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 10. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, David never failed to give thanks in prayer. We give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you and we have given you only what comes from your hand. Since everything in heaven and earth belongs to God, regarding the materials they brought for building the temple, he said, We have given you only what comes from your hand. How could this be considered something great? Compared to the grace that God has bestowed upon us, our gratitude is far too lacking. Let's move on to Psalm chapter 50. 
Let's take a look at Psalm chapter 50, verse 22. Consider this, you who forget God, or I will tear you to pieces with no one to rescue you. Those who sacrifice thank offerings, what do they do? Honor me. And to the blameless, I will show my salvation. It is written in the NLT Bible, but giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. Also, it is written in the ERV Bible, whoever gives a thank offering shows me honor. When we think about these teachings of the Bible, we should consider, aren't grumbling, complaining, and dissatisfaction the opposites of giving thanks? And don't they steer our lives away from heaven and onto a detour? The saints of the early church truly faced much persecution, tribulations, and hardships. However, they did not view the persecution and hardships as pain or distress. They embraced them with gratitude. Even up to the moment of being martyred by becoming food for lions in the Roman amphitheaters, their faces were filled with joy and hope for the kingdom of heaven. It is said that they reflected on the lives God had given them with joy, isn't it? People give thanks to God for a favorable environment, but if given a difficult situation, who would be able to do the same? There are those who question this, but even in challenging circumstances, what does God say we should do? He tells us to give thanks. Until the moment we enter the heavenly kingdom, we are in the truth of the new covenant. Also, we know father and mother and are within Zion. Think about this. Moreover, think about having received the promise of being saved and becoming the royal priesthood in heaven. We should always be grateful for this. We must never become foolish individuals who, preoccupied with the minor details of today, lose out on the great glory of heaven. It is written that those who give thank offerings are the ones who glorify God. Then, we can understand that, on the other hand, those who don't give thanks but complain instead absolutely cannot glorify God. Thus, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, who were destroyed during the 40-year journey in the wilderness? Those who grumbled were destroyed. Grumbling was just the beginning. As they continued to grumble, the muscles for the worse kept developing. Hence, what did it bring about? It led to disobedience. They grumbled and complained about what God has commanded, finding it disagreeable. In this way, grumbling eventually leads to disobedience. So God declared, I swear that these people will certainly not enter into my kingdom. God even made an oath. When God has made an oath, it is irrevocable and cannot be reversed. Disobedience is rooted in grumbling, and grumbling always stems from an unthankful heart. We should always remember this so we can be filled with joy and happiness in Zion. Everyone, please reflect on yourselves today and also reflect on last year and even your whole life from the moment you were born and even from the moment you were expelled from heaven. Please take a moment to discover every little detail of the grace father and mother have constantly bestowed upon us. Then, if you go to bed with a thankful heart saying, thank you for today as well, you will have good dreams.
God will bless you abundantly with happiness and graciously add more faith as a bonus. Therefore, just being with father and mother on this earth leaves us longing for nothing else. Things such as a beautiful mansion and a beautiful car are all fleeting. Aren't the things of heaven eternal? Should we give up eternity just to enjoy such a life for a little while? We should always seek to grasp what is eternal. First and foremost, we must express our gratitude to father and mother for the grace of salvation and for their coming to this earth for us. Also, we must be thankful to all our beloved Zion family members who have each played their roles, whether big or small, within the gospel. Moreover, don't forget to reach out with a call of thanks to our family, relatives, acquaintances, or friends. Those who give thanks often will surely be blessed by God. Since the teachings of father and mother, who are the source of salvation, emphasize giving thanks, let us practice their teachings so that our lips will never cease to give thanks. By this, I would like to conclude the sermon. Thank you very much.